Tom here from Lawrence Systems and TrueNAS Scale beginning in 2310 and higher has removed the rsync D service. They've brought it back as an application. We're going to show you today how to set that application up. And I'm going to use Synology as an example of why you might need this application to have it talking to another NAS as a server. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking company looking for expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Perhaps you're an internal IT team seeking help to proactively manage, monitor, or secure your systems. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific project needs. Whether you require fully managed or co-managed IT services, our experienced team is ready to step in and help. We specialize in supporting businesses that need IT administration or IT teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. To learn more about any of our services, head over to our website and fill out the Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com. Let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store and affiliate links down below that will lead you to discounts and deals for products and services we discuss on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you really came here for. Now for this demo, we're using TrueNAS Scale 23.10.01, latest version here in November of 2023. And we want to start by creating a data set by which we want to put all of our rsync data. So I'm going to click on this top pool here, flashy, and I want to add a data set. And we're going to call that data set YouTube rsync demo. I'll put the same thing in the comments. Scrolling down, leaving all the other options the same. And the share type is going to be set to apps because we're going to be tying an app to this. Now, if you want a further, more in-depth video on permissions in TrueNAS Scale, you'll find that linked in the description down below. Now that we have our data set created, we're going to go over here to apps. I already have an instance of rsync running on this. We're going to add another one because, yes, you can have more than one running as long as you're not using the same port. This one's currently on port 30026, which is a default. So go over here to discover apps. Search for rsync, click to install another instance. This instance has to have a new ID, so we'll put YouTube after it. Then we're going to scroll down here, and we'll change the rsync port. And we'll just change this to 30027, because we don't want it to be at the same port as the existing one, or that will cause a problem. And then we want to add our module. We're going to give the module a name. I'm going to give it the same name as a data set, but you can call it another name. This just makes it easier when you're looking at them so you know where they go. But if we can call this anything else, it'll still work because we actually choose the data set further down. We'll put this in the comments here or choose the data set itself by going here, here, and choose the Mount Flashy, which is the pool name, YouTube rsync demo, which is the data set we created. Then we choose the access mode. Do we want this read only or read write or write only? Leave max connection at zero. This is the maximum number of servers you can connect unless you want to restrict it to maybe three servers, but zero means as many servers as can connect to it. Leave the UID and GID the same at 568. And this is where you can set the limited amounts of security options you have. Host allow means host only that you want to allow to connect to this rsync. Please note, there's no username and password. So anything running rsync on the network that can see this module will have access to read and write the data depending on the parameters you set above. So only add the host you want to allow or omit them and any host on the network can connect. For this demo, we're just going to omit it and leave this all blank, but you can also specifically deny hosts instead. So maybe you want all the hosts except for certain ones and add that to the deny list. Then from there, we're gonna click the install all right, now we see the system deploying, and now the module is ready to use. Now we're going to go over here to my Synology NAS because this is the NAS I have, but lots of different NAS systems do support rsync, and it's an easy way to get data over to your true NAS. So we're going to go here. And I just want to do a folders and packages backup. Scroll down and choose rsync. Next, we'll just say single version. We're going to choose the rsync compatible server. Put in the IP address of our true NAS. There's no encryption in this. Put in the port number, which was a 30027. It doesn't matter what you put for the username, but if we don't put a username, the Synology won't let me go further. For example, if we just try to choose a module, it doesn't, but we put in something random here. It then sees the module we created, which was called YouTube rsync demo. And there's no password here. So we're going to go ahead and do next. We'll choose Docker just because I want to back that up, but really anything is valid on the list here to back up in Synology. I don't care about the application data itself. We're just going to back up the data in there and we'll call this 
We'll call this YouTube demo, hit next and done. And the first thing it wants to do is initially run the backup. Do you want to backup now? We're going to go ahead and say yes. And it's going to kick off the backup task. And there we go. We have a successful backup. I'm going to log into my TrueNAS real quick from the command line here because I wanted to see that the files are there. So we're going to go to the Mount Flashy YouTube rsync demo ls. We can see there's the folder Synology created. And from there, we'll look into the Docker. And there's the Docker data that I told it to back up. Now, something I want to make note of is if you go over here to data protection, you'll see that there is rsync tasks still available inside of TrueNAS. And if we want to add an rsync task, you can set the path and we can go flashy. We'll say like YouTube demo rsync. And the only options here though are SS8 and remote module. That's because this task is not running a server, but this is to allow TrueNAS to connect to something else that is talking rsync. And you could use this to connect to another TrueNAS, but honestly, doing things inside of TrueNAS via replication, if you're going from TrueNAS to TrueNAS, is a much, much faster and much, much more efficient way to move data between TrueNASs. But it is nice that if you have some other server running rsync and you wanted to either push or pull that data, you can do that in inside of here and it will work. It will even talk to another TrueNAS via module if you had some use case for that. Now this is soon to be deprecated in TrueNAS core as well in an upcoming version. I will probably do a video on that, but I have less core people that are usually asking me for rsync connectivity. It's kind of a one-off thing when you have other servers and my example here was Synology, but rsync is supported in a lot of other things like even QNAP and many of the one-off odd brands of NAS. And if you're trying to move data from one place to another or synchronize it on a regular basis, rsync is still a pretty good way to do it. But please note, there's not really any security on the way this works. It's only filtering by the IP address of what you're allowing to connect to it. But for doing transfers or doing upgrades when you have to move a bunch of data, hey, it does work well for that. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content on this channel. Head over to lawrencesystems.com to connect with me on whatever socials that you will find me on there when you go there. All right, and thanks.